Welcome to a Healthy Push podcast. I'm Shannon Jackson, former anxiety sufferer turned adventure mom and anxiety recovery coach. I struggled with anxiety, panic disorder, and agoraphobia for 15 years. And now I help people to push past the stuff that I used to struggle with. Each week, I'll be sharing real and honest conversations along with actionable and practical steps that you can take to help you push past your anxious thoughts, the symptoms, panic, and fears. Welcome. You're right where you're meant to be. All right. I am really stoked for today's conversation. I have Daniel with me and he is a former Panic to Peace student, but I'm so stoked to have this conversation because I have not yet had a male on my podcast to talk and share their story and to just get into all the things. So Daniel, welcome. I am so excited to have you here. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Excited to be here. It's going to be so good. So let's just start like who are you? Tell us a little bit about Daniel. <laughs> okay. Um, I was, uh, I'm born and raised, uh, I'm a native to Colorado. Um, I, uh, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast. I'm a heavy equipment operator of 15 years. Um, got three kids, a wife and just, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know what else, living know the what dream else to in say. Colorado. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So let's let's dive in. I'm curious. I know you've struggled with anxiety and panic for quite some time. Can you like take us back, sort of share with us when you really started to to see it popping up and really noticing like this is this is tough. Like I'm struggling with something here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I I can think back. Um, you know, as far back as, oh man, like maybe, you know, nine or 10 years old, like, you know, I would just be kind of just, you know, living my life and doing my thing and being a kid and stuff like that. And then there was just these moments that we would do certain things where I would just start feeling like shit. You know, I just didn't feel right. There was something off. There was, you know, felt like something bad was going to happen. And then, um, and then, uh, I, I would just, I don't know. I, I, we would go do something and then, you know, something like a little overstimulating, something that would get me a little excited, like, you know, climbing a mountain pass or something like that, or getting above, you know, like 10 or 10 or 11,000 feet here in Colorado. And then I would just, I, I would start hyperventilating. I would, you know, feel disassociated from myself. And I, you know, I was explaining it to my mom and my dad and they're, you know, they're like, you know, my dad would give me like a brown paper bag and, you know, he would just, because he saw me that I was like freaking out. So early on in my, in my, you know, when I was younger, I noticed that I was a little bit more of a like panic, panicky or kid, but it just, it never really affected me. I mean, I, you know, we went on trips all the time. I mean, we would drive across the United States, no problem, you know, and I wouldn't, you know, feel any type of way about anything um, all the way up, you know, through my teenage years, I mean, I was just an unstoppable force. Like just, I mean, I would get into my car and I would drive so far deep into the mountains of Colorado. Like people would be like, you're nuts. Like you're insane. Like I was just, I would just go and just do things. I mean, I would drive, you know, 13 hours by myself to two different States and, you know, didn't bother me all through, you know, beginning of my twenties. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I had my daughter when I was like 21, never bothered me just, you know, living my life. And then at the age of like 22, my dad passed away and, you know, my dad and I had an extremely good relationship, very close. We hunted all the time, me and my brother, and we'd always go hunting and stuff like that. You know, he's the reason why I'm a heavy equipment operator and, you know, who I am today, you know, the whole thing. I mean, he just, uh, you know, he really sculpted me of who I am as a person today. So when he passed away, that destroyed me yeah. that, I mean, just the trauma of that just absolutely destroyed me. I mean, it just, you know, I, I I've, you know, I, I didn't even, I wasn't suicidal, but I didn't want to live if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I just, you know, I didn't, I like, I was just, I was so devastated by, you know, him passing away that I just, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I started noticing that my symptoms started getting severely worse after that because while he was in the hospital, I was finding it hard, you know, hard to breathe, hard to think, you know, just like the, the mental clarity was just completely gone out of me. And like, 
you know, um, and just like panic and anxiety was just, you know, it was just so that's when it started to really focus in. And then when he actually passed away, it was just, it, it was like something that I couldn't get a hold of for a long time. And I think after the initial shock of him passing away kind of subsided, um, you know, my symptoms kind of reduced a little bit, but then they, it's like they started to just like slowly build back up and they just, and it's like, they started to become a little bit more prevalent. Like every day was just like a little bit more, like a little bit more anxiety every single day, which just a little bit more, a little bit more until finally. Um, and this is where I think the agoraphobia came into play for me is I was feeling so shitty one day that I got into my car and I went for a drive. Like I always done, you know, I just would get in my car and I would just go. And I remember, um, I was heading up this, I was way out in the country and I was heading up this road and I got to this point to where I started losing my mind, like where I was like, I'm by myself. I'm, you know, like I'm way the hell away from home. Like, and I just, I was like, I mean, I got to the point where I was actually fucking panicking, like where I was just, I was like, I'm going to pull over and I'm going to ask one of these farm people for freaking help, you know? And that was the most, that was the scariest panic attack. I, you know, that I feel, I mean, I've had many, many, many more since then, but like that one was just, holy crap, man. It just, it really, I mean, it, it was bad, but, um, so that, that's, that put that panic attack pushed me just into agoraphobia where I was afraid. I was afraid to leave the house. I got to the point to where even going like traveling inside my own city was just, I mean, I would just be sweating profusely just driving around and, you know, I mean, it gets cold as hell here and it, and like my windows of my car would be fogged up and my friends would be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, Oh, I'm just hot. Like right, I just got right. jacket on and got here though. Like I'm fine. And you know, but internally, I mean, I was just, I was losing my mind. So, um, so I just, I started to, to, to get rid of my symptoms to reduce my symptoms. I just started drinking yeah. all the time. So yeah. I mean, I, it was just, it was every, every time that I would leave my house, I mean, I would, you know, I would pregame and then I would just, you know, go out and then I would be drunk the whole time anywhere I went. So that in turn created its own problems. And, uh, I was, I, I, I turned into a pretty bad alcoholic. Um, I mean, pretty much overnight. And I mean, I was getting kicked out of, I mean, I was losing friends. I was getting kicked out of my house. I was, you know, because I was just drunk all the time yeah. and it was, you know, but I just, I was trying to disassociate from that feeling of anxiety, panic and anxiety, you know, and it's crazy. Cause it's like, I never even really thought I, I never thought that like at the time I was like, I don't, I don't know what a panic, you know, like a panic disorder is and agoraphobia and all this stuff like that. I only learned about this stuff maybe a year ago. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. I mean, that's wild. And that was, that was, yeah, yeah, that was over 10 years ago. I think that's such a common experience, though, that you don't really know what it is when you're in it. And your normal human response is, let me do anything to not feel this way. And a lot of people turn to drinking and substances and whatever will give you that that short-term relief. And even though it doesn't quite take away the feelings, right, right. it doesn't fix things, it definitely makes it feel like it's easier to live with it when you can just sort of numb it out. I mean, I did the same thing. So uh-huh. I'm glad that you're sharing it. It's like, because there's so much shame there, I think, but it makes so much sense. Like you were experiencing something really hard. You didn't even really understand what was going on. It's really scary to experience panic and feel like there's really no reason why it's happening, but it keeps happening and it's terrifying. And I'm just going to do whatever I can to like make myself feel better. I mean, cool. Makes perfect sense, right? right? <laughs> so what, yeah. what, what, what happened from there? <laughs> um. So, I mean, so from there on, um, so yeah, so I, I, you know, I honestly, I continue to drink a lot. I mean, I continue to just, you know, to kill the pain with that. And then, um, I met my wife and she, you know, before that, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. Like I just, I never really had a reason to, 
you know, to, to get better or to want to do more or something like that. And at this point, I mean, it's just like, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even leave my city, the city limits. Like I, you know, and if I did, I mean, a trip, you know, a trip, you know, an hour or two hours away, I would just be, I would have to be so inebriated, like, you know, to the point of, to where I was like, I, I wouldn't even really remember trips or anything like that, you know, but that was better than, that to me was better than, uh, than feeling the, you know, the symptoms, you know, of panic and anxiety. So, um, so I met my wife and she, you know, she didn't know that I I was suffering from this and, you know, she wanted to go on trips and, you know, she, you know, she could fly and all this stuff like that. And, and, uh, and I would tell her stories about, you know, all the times that I've, you know, been on the flights and I've been here. Cause I mean, she's like, man, you've been everywhere. Like you've been all over the United States. Like you've done all these things. And like, there's like, there's nothing that you haven't done, you know? And she's like, why aren't we doing any of those things now? And I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm broke and I'm, you know, I don't have money and stuff like that. I was making up excuses to like, cause I couldn't tell her, like I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to tell her that it's just like, I have a severe panic and anxiety disorder that I don't know what to do about. So, so there was a pro there was a time, you know, in the beginning of our relationship where I was starting to branch out a little bit more and little did I know that I was, you know, doing a little bit more exposure therapy and, you know, and stuff like that unbeknownst to me, you know, so I started going further and further and further and we were going two, three, four hours away. And I wasn't, I wasn't drinking at all. We actually stopped drinking. Well, I stopped drinking. She didn't really drink that much, but I stopped drinking. I mean, and I was just like, holy crap, man, I'm starting to feel the way that I used to feel. And, um, so 2020 hit and, you know, the, all this, all the fires and, and, you know, the COVID and stuff like that happened. And, um, so we went on a super long trip. I think it was like five hours away or something like that. And, um, I had the worst time of my life. I mean, I was just struggling so hard to just all these panic symptoms were coming back up on the trip itself. I mean, I actually suffered from a really, really bad panic attack that um, kind of just pushed me right back into drinking. I mean, I immediately pulled over. We went to the first bar and I just sat there and, you know, got really drunk and so that I could finish the trip. Yeah. And we finished it and we did it. But man, when I got back, it was like, you know, it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, like I, I'm not as healed as I think that I am. So that's going to push me back into this shell of just like, Oh man, I don't I don't even know what to do. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a, a moment of pause, you know, cause I just, I had, I thought that I was good. And then I just like got pushed back into, you know, the way that I felt. And I was like, I thought I was, I thought I was over it. So anyways, um, I think, Daniel, you know, I, kind of I want to highlight me. something that you just said, cause I think it's so important. You said, you know, I, I, I'm not as healed as I think I am. And that is such a common uh-huh. experience, right? That people have. It's one that I had that you have gone so long with sort of using any of these coping mechanisms like drinking and right. you've bet, gotten really good at avoiding feeling. And then you, mm-hmm. you know, remove those coping mechanisms and all of a sudden you have to feel now. And it's like, oh God, I remember this. This feels terrible. And it's not just trying to numb the feelings of anxiety. It's also trying to numb mm-hmm. a lot of feelings and experiences and things that you haven't wanted to face, right? Like you know, there's right. some grief there, right? There's some really challenging stuff. And the the coping strategies, they sort of work, right? The drinking, it, it numbs the anxiety, it numbs the pain, it allows you to sort of run from all this stuff. But you take those things away. And not only do you have to feel the anxiety, you have to feel everything that you've been running from. Like that is yeah. so hard. So of course, you were like, heck to the no, like, I'll just go back to the drinking and this is going to be helpful. Like, of course. You do that. Right. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I, it makes sense that yeah. I, you know, that I, I ran back to that, just, yeah. you know, but, um, so let's see. So, yeah, so, um, cut to maybe like a year and a half, two years later, um, I really started to like focus more on 
like health and fitness and stuff like that. And, you know, wanting to lose weight and, and exercising and stuff like that, I started to take it more seriously. And I just started noticing, you know, that like my, my, I mean, my stress was starting to reduce. Um, I mean, we started watching what we were eating and we started getting on a, you know, uh, we were working out like three, four times a week, you know, and I just started noticing, man, I'm just feeling so much better. And so, you know, so much, uh, just so much clarity and like, I, you know, I'm able to think better and I'm better to, you know, I'm, it's easier for me to sleep. It's, you know, all these things. So I started diving a little bit more into, you know, just a health and fitness and stuff like that. And, um, you know, with, uh, with a help, with help of, uh, supplements too. I mean, I started taking supplements to reduce my stress and, you know, and stuff like that. And then it was just like, it was just like a dawn of a, a, of a new day. I mean, I was just like, holy crap. Like, you know, the, what I've been missing this whole time was I needed to start focusing on my, you know, my health and, you know, my fitness and like, you know, dieting and nutrition and, you know, and stuff like that. And I just, I started feeling so much better, you know, and then I went with that for, you know, for maybe a year or so. And then I wanted a little bit more, you know, because I, there was just a piece of me that was missing because I, you know, I was like, man, I want to get on a flight again. You know, I want to be able to travel, you know, 13 hours again and not have a, you know, debilitating panic attack without, you know, (laughs) and just all this stuff. So I started researching, you know, more and more things. And, um, and, uh, I found this, I found this, uh, this kind of procedure and it was called the Stella, Stella ganglion block shot in your neck. And it uh, injects like some kind of uh, medicine into your neck. And um, I was going with that. I was like, oh, man, that like, that's it. Like, you know, I want to I want to do that, you know, and let's let's just do that. And this uh, will be nothing. And then I was like, but it's a temporary fix. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> like this will be the fix, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But the more and more I researched it, I was like, this is only a temporary mm-hmm. fix. You know, this is something for temporary relief. I want I want to get this gone for good. And um I research, you know, and I mean, when I found out that there was something that I could actually do about my anxiety, like there was, you know, like I found you, I mean, the, the, the emotions that came over me were overwhelming. I mean, it was like, cause I had no idea that I could actually hearing somebody else tell me that they were a sufferer themselves and that they, that they, you know, that they got rid of their, you know, their panic and, and anxiety and stuff like that was just, I mean, it, it was just such an optimistic feeling that it was overwhelming. Like I just, I didn't know what to, how to feel about it. So, yeah, you know, I'm so glad that you mentioned that you started to see shifts, right? When you were supporting yourself, when you were exercising, when you were eating better, you know, we so minimize these things, but it's such a basic concept, right? That actually works that if you support yourself, it's going to better support your nervous system And it's going to actually relieve stress and bring down this dysregulation. And that stuff, right, although we really minimize it, it has such massive effects on us being able to actually do the harder work. Like if you want to face your fears, right, and do longer drives or you want to get back to all these things that you used to do, like you've got to actually support yourself and your nervous system to be able to do that work. Because if you just try to go in full force, like I'm just going to do exposures and I'm going to face the fears and and you don't have that capacity there within yourself and you're not supporting yourself, it's not going to work. So that's really cool that you saw that. But yeah, I'm glad that you're talking about I just, you know, thought maybe this would be the fix, like, because we're all looking for that one fix, right? Just give me this one thing yeah. that's going <laughs> to cure everything. But, you know, it doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, that that was one of the things that I researched because I'm, you know, I'll, I'll research the hell out of something. And and um, and that's the one thing that I found is that I was like, OK, well, that's pretty cool. But I was like, how long does that last for? And there was a super gray area of just like, well, you know, I mean, it's a, it could be, you know, it, it could help you for life or it could just last for a week. And it's like, whoa, like that is, <laughs> that's crazy. Like that's, that's not what I'm trying to look for, man. I'm trying to, I mean, but I was super naive about everything, you know, at that point, you know, and in my mind, in my naive mind, like I thought that I really thought that that was, uh, you know, that that was the fix. 
because I mean that, you know, they, they kind of sell it to you in that way, not talking anything bad about it. It helps a lot of veterans, you know, and it helps a lot of people. So I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's just not for me. I want, I want like a, you know, an alternate way to fix my problem. That's going to be permanent in the long run. So, um, so that's why this was, you know, this was an obvious choice for me. So yeah. And having that, just getting to the place where you can make that shift and like actually recognize I've been seeking out the short term. I've been seeking out these quick fixes and these hacks and, you know, these, these things that I know aren't going to actually heal it completely. And I'm not going to do that anymore. And like, I'm actually going to focus on what's going to lead me to the long-term healing, like that what's going to get to the root of it and what's actually going to heal it. And being able to, of course, see that, I think that's what's so powerful. I still even have a hard time when people are like, you changed my life, Shannon. And I'm like, I didn't really change your life, but you did it. But I can see how just being able to see somebody else that's been through it and to be able to recognize yeah. like this doesn't have to be it and you don't have to keep looking for all these quick fixes and these hacks and trying all these things like you just really need to put the time and the focus into you and in, in creating that healthy relationship with you and responding to anxiety in the healthiest way and like that's it that's where the magic lies it's not anywhere else but it's hard like you when you're right. in it of course you just want to feel better and you'll do anything to feel better Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing that resonated with me the most is, you know, like I said, I mean, I'll sit there and I'll research something to death, but, and I, I mean, I read two or three different books. I was listening to your podcast religiously. I was listening to the other podcasts religiously, uh, you know, reading just all this, like all this information, this information overload. But one of the things that I love that you said was that, you know, all of that stuff is great. You know, all that stuff, like learning about it, learning what it is. I mean, I, I know, what happens chemically inside your body when you have these panic attacks, but, you know, going out and getting the exposure and, you know, learning to change your, um, your relationship with the anxiety and the panic and, you know, and stuff like that, hearing that was just, I mean, it helped me. I feel like I'm like one of those people that it just like, if I can reduce my symptoms of panic and anxiety, any, I feel like anybody can do it, you know, and it's, I, you know, Same. so, That's- but yeah, that, that was, that was a very empowering feeling. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, how are things looking nowadays? Cause I know, of course, like you said, just a, a year ago, like it was, things are pretty rough. So like, what is life looking like? So life now, um, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, until I took your course, like I didn't, you know, I didn't think that I would ever be able to step foot on a plane again. And it's like, I mean, I've, you know, I, I feel like I feel optimistic enough to where I can step foot on a plane again and I can fly somewhere. Um, I've been wanting to do more. I've been wanting to travel further. I mean, I've been wanting to go out of state. We have a, you know, we have a, a, a trip booked for this summer for me to go for, uh, for me and my wife to go out of state and, um, you know, that's, that's a huge deal for me. I mean, I'm starting to just, I, I'm, I'm starting to be able to do more. Like I'm, you know, just because like I am changing my, uh, my relationship with panic and anxiety and stuff like that. And I still, I still experience panic attacks, but they're not as scary as they used to be. I mean, they're like, they, they really are like, I'm, I'm, I'm being able to rationalize them so much more And I can have one and they're not going to ruin my day. Like I can have one, I can have a, you know, fairly bad one. And like, I can, you know, I can tell myself that I'm not in danger. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing going on. Like this is the chemical response that's going on in my head that is making the, you know, adrenal glands do this and blah, 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 and all this stuff like that. And it's like, I immediately can come back down, you know, to square one and I can enjoy doing what I'm doing, Yeah. you know, beforehand. I mean, it would ruin my week. It would ruin my day. I would be begging my wife for us to go home. I would, you know, I, I couldn't wait to get back in the car and I would be racing back down, you know, to my house or, you know, back to our city or whatever, you know, and it's like, you know, it's just so easy for me to like slow down and just rationalize everything and just get myself back to, you know, centered and, and stuff like that. So life has looked a lot better 
you know, here recently, especially here in just the last few months. I mean, it's just, I feel more optimistic about everything. It's so cool to hear you say, like, I've gotten really good at slowing down and having a different and a healthy response to anxiety because that's such a hard thing to do when you're struggling with panic attacks. I mean, when you have the panic attack, right, of course, your immediate reaction, anyone's immediate reaction is, oh, shit, (laughs) this is a problem. Like, let me do anything to get rid of it. And why recovery is so hard, right, is because you have to actually slow down and say, okay, what we've been doing, this trying to do anything and everything to get rid of it, trying to fix it has created Mm -hmm. so many problems and I need to do my best to resist doing all that. And like, let me just slow down and let myself be with it and not try to like think and do my way out of it. So, I mean, that's that's such a massive shift, right? And I'm so glad to hear you say, I I mean, I can see it, right? You have this different outlook now that like, I am going to do the things, but I think it's also important to say, right? You don't just take my program and then magically you're hopping on all the planes and you're taking all the the trips and all the things like that's that's not how it works and that's I don't ever want people to think that because that's the problem right you get sold on the program is going to be the thing that works the the hack is going to be the thing that works the it's not any of that like you are going to be the thing right. that actually works and puts it all together and fortunately yeah. that takes time this is not like a oh, I have all these revelations and I start doing these things and I flip a switch and now I'm good. Like it it just doesn't happen that way. So slowly, slow right. growth is the best yeah. kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll, um, and you'll definitely notice a change. I mean, you'll, you know, you'll notice that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that you just kind of notice slowly over time you know, that it's just like, man, like you look back on the things that you've done and you compare them to the things that you used to do. And it's just, it's like a huge, you know, it's kind of night and day. I mean, it really is for me. It is. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, like I said, that would just, I mean, it would just put me out, you know? And then for like the, I, I call it the, I call it like the panic hangover Mm -hmm. where, um, it's, uh, you, like you have a panic attack, it's bad. And then it's just like for days afterwards, you're just like in just this, you know, depressed, you know, depressed state. And you just don't, you know, you're thinking of like, why, like, why, why did that happen to me? What, what happened? Like, what were the scenarios that lined up? What was the perfect storm that made that happen to me? And it just, it's like, now it's like, I don't even, I don't even think about that. So, because it, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and you know it doesn't. It's not helpful. And that it's so hard though because I know that when you're struggling with it, right, you think if I can figure out why, I can make it not happen. Like if I can figure out why the panic attack mm-hmm. happened, if I can figure out why the symptom, whatever, I can make it so that this doesn't happen again. And usually right. the reason why, right, is because your system's just incredibly dysregulated or maybe you had something stressful happen or maybe you were like actually letting yourself face something and do something scary. And so it made sense that you had the panic attack. But when you go down those holes, right, and you're analyzing and trying to problem solve and like you said, right, you're really good at researching things and like digging into things. But that's so not helpful when it comes Mm -hmm. to anxiety recovery because the more you dig into the why and the more you try to figure it out, the more you're just continually creating that anxiety. Like you cannot think and figure your way out of it. And it's really best just to say, not sure, but it's okay that it happened and doesn't have to mean anything, right? Like I can just continue to go on with my day and I don't have to create a story about this and I don't have to figure out the why. Or sometimes it's just simply recognizing, oh yeah, I've been more stressed or my kid's been sick and it makes sense why I'm feeling more anxious today. But I know it's not simple, yeah. right? <laughs> to always have that yeah. rational brain, especially when you're you're in panic mode. That doesn't happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I yeah. I just want to talk about a, for a little bit, because I think this is really important. I have, of course, I don't I shouldn't say of course, because I think people don't realize this or see this, right? People probably see a lot of women that join my program and see a lot of women who mm-hmm. worked with me and just a lot of Instagram followers that are women. But I also have a lot of 
men that follow me and absorb the content, listen to my podcast. I'm curious, like, as a man thinking about working with me, were you like, oh gosh, like she doesn't really work with men or like, like, I, did you have any hesitancy to be like, I'm going to ask for help? Like, was it hard? Oh yeah. 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 No, it was, um, it's, it was something that for sure crossed my mind. And, um, I mean, even, you know, going into something like this, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's definitely some thought of, you know, that it's, uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It, it's just, it's kind of a weird feeling because it's just, it's like she works with so many women and yeah. And it's like, you know, the, you know, you see the comments and, you know, all this stuff like that. And it's just, I mean, it's like all strictly just women. And it's like, you know, even in, even in the course, I mean, it's just, you know, we all, I mean, for the most part, I mean, you know, a lot of men stayed quiet and, and stuff like that. And I do, I don't know. I, I don't know what the stigma is. I mean, I, it's, it's something that I haven't really, you know, really yet figured out, but there, there is some weirdness because I, I, I think that there, there is just like a stigma in, in life in general, where it's just, it's like, um, I don't know, it's men are kind of afraid to, sh you know, to be vulnerable like yeah. that and to, you well, know, like, so, yeah. but I, I mean, for me, it, it's a, I think sort of where huh? it comes from, right, is you've all been taught, like, to not be vulnerable. I think you've all been taught, especially in the mm -hmm. culture that we live in, to not do that. Like, men are supposed to just not feel, right? You're supported, su supposed to just, like, take it all on, be okay, like, be the, quote, man. And I think you've been shaped in a way that's really harmful because it's, like, telling you, right, you can't be vulnerable. It's not safe to be vulnerable. That's not – what you're supposed to do. And I think the really right. beautiful thing, right, is that you're helping to break this stigma by coming on the podcast and sharing your story and showing other men, right, it's okay. It's okay that you're struggling and it's okay to talk about it. And it's actually incredibly helpful, right, to get vulnerable. But I think that's a big reason. I don't know. I'm curious if you think so that like, that's why it's, that's one of the reasons why I think it's so hard for men to share and why men stay quiet is because you've sort of been taught, like, it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I also think that, um, you know, there's, I mean, a lot of men that I, that I know that I'm friends with, I mean, they, if they had a situation or, uh, um, you know, something like this happening, like, for instance, a lot of my friends don't even know that I have this problem. They don't know that I've seeked therapy. They don't know that I've tried to take medication, that I've tried this device, all, all this stuff like that. They don't need, they don't, they have no idea, you know, because it takes one guy out of the group, you know, to not have these problems that will, I mean, more relentlessly make fun of you. I mean, that's just kind of how men's culture yeah. is, is just, you know, at, at least in my world, you know, and, um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't, and I, I mean, I trust these guys with my life. I love them. You know, they're, I mean, they're my, they're my brothers. I mean, you know, but they're, um, they don't understand and they don't get it. And they think that they're just like, well, why don't you just try calming down? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, man, you know, if I could just calm down, everything would be amazing, right. but no, it's not like that. So, and they just don't understand. So yeah, there's a huge stigma. Yeah. I am so proud of you, Daniel, because this is going to be so helpful for not just men, but also for women. And I think, you know, like I've we've talked about, I also did the same thing for years. You know, people didn't know that I struggled. And I think there is just a lot of shame. And, and it's mostly, you know, there because we don't talk about it because we think it's better to not share because people will either judge us or make fun of us or or make comments, but there is so much healing that happens when you actually are vulnerable and you're able to talk about things and you're able to actually say like, hey, I'm struggling. And I know when I did, it was like one of those moments, right, where a couple of my friends were like, gosh, Shannon, I'm on medication. Like I've struggled with that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, so – I yeah. am just so dang proud of you and for all the work that you've done and just really this commitment. I think the difference is, right, and I, that I see in you is you have this commitment to the long-term healing and you're done with the hacks and the, all the things and you're not trying to fix it anymore in those ways. Mm -hmm. You're really looking at 
I'm going to heal this relationship with myself and with anxiety and like I can do this. And that is so dang beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, if I can pave the way, you know, for any man that is out there or woman, I mean, you know, that is reluctant, you know, because of, because of, um, I don't know, whatever reason. I mean, it just, if I can, if I can be the face of, you know, even helping just one guy or one girl, whatever, I mean, it's, you know, yeah. like I, I feel like I've, you know, accomplished something. So, because, I was reluctant. I was, you know, I had second thoughts, but I'm so freaking glad that I did this. I mean, you know, because it, it, it helped. It really did help me. Good. So. Good. I'm so glad. Well, thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate you and just so proud of all the work that you're doing and keep, you know, keep on taking that healthy action. <laughs> right. Yep, for sure. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Healthy Push. If you want more, head on over to ahealthypush.com for the show notes and lots more tips, tools, and inspiration that will support your recovery. And if you're hoping for me to cover a certain topic, be sure to join my Instagram community at ahealthypush and let me know in the comments what you want to hear next.